Jeremy is 25 years old, admitted to A&D with sickle cell crisis due to the cold weather. Over the last 24 hours, he has been suffering from worsening pain in his lower back and right tibia. This is where he normally has pain during a crisis. He says the pain is now unbearable and scores it as 10 out of 10 on a numeric rating scale. He has no other comorbidities or organ involvements. His observations show a heart rate of 120, a blood pressure of 150 over 87, and a respiratory rate of 25, indicating that he is very distressed. Jeremy, this is the doctor. He's come to talk to you about what painkillers we can give you. Hello, Mr King. My name's Helen. I'm the doctor on call today. What have you given him for the pain? Some IV paracetamol. Jeremy, has that worked at all? Jeremy, we're just going to go outside and have a quick discussion, and then I'll be back in a moment. Wow, that crisis seems to have really hit him hard. I don't know what to do. I've never seen anybody in that much pain before. I think he needs morphine, but maybe we should call the pain team. Maybe their specialist nurse can give us some advice. It's a good idea. Come on. A few minutes later, the specialist pain nurse appears. Fantastic. Thank you. It's just this way. Together, they go back to see Jeremy. Mm, seems like he's in quite a bad crisis. What are your plans, Doctor? Well, we'd planned on giving him morphine, but I don't really know how to go about it. I know that there's oral morphine, and I've seen that given before, but I just don't know the dose. OK. Well, I agree with you. I think he does need morphine, but I think he probably needs intravenous morphine. OK. So why can't we give the morphine orally? Well, when people are in severe pain, um, they mount quite a stress response, and that can cause both delayed gastric emptying as well as vasoconstriction of the muscle and skin. OK, so um, I presume that then means that oral, intramuscular and subcutaneous morphine is quite unreliable. Exactly. So IV morphine is a quick and effective way to get a reliable level of morphine plasma concentration as quick as possible. OK. Jeremy rated his pain at 10 out of 10 on an numeric rating scale. Anything over a 7 out of 10 should be treated as a pain emergency with IV morphine or other strong opioids. The stress of severe pain causes delayed gastric emptying as well as vasoconstriction of the muscle and soft tissue. For this reason, oral, subcutaneous and intramuscular routes are unreliable and should not be used. Let's look at this graph of plasma concentration of analgesic against time. The reason we use the intravenous route is that we want to achieve an effective plasma concentration quickly above this line and then keep the concentration above a therapeutic level with repeated doses of analgesics later. It would take a long time to build up an effective plasma concentration with small and infrequent doses of analgesia. Here's 10 milligrams of morphine and 10 mils of saline and here's the saline flush. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So shall I give him all of it? Um, no, what we want to do is titrate it to effect. So normally we start with, with between one and three milligrams okay. and um, then we can check again in five minutes and see how he's doing. And in Jeremy's case? Well he's quite fit and well and he's young so we can start with three milligrams but if he were elderly or frail we'd want to start with one. Okay. Sorry, okay, so me. take your time, inject slowly. Yeah. Excellent. Shall I do a set of observations at five minutes? Absolutely, thanks very much. Loading with intravenous morphine often requires repeated slow injections of one to three milligrams every five minutes until the patient is comfortable. Stay with the patient after giving the injections in order to recognise any adverse effects early. Five minutes after giving the injections, we will check the pain score, check for sedation and do a full set of observations. In case oxygen saturation levels fall below 96%, we need to have oxygen readily available. Once Jeremy is comfortable, we will continue to do checks every five minutes for 15 minutes after the last injection. 
We will then check every 15 minutes for an hour and finally do hourly checks for four hours. So do you know when to stop this initial morphine loading phase? Yeah, sure. It's um, when the patient's comfortable. That's right. And, you know, we're not trying to make him pain free, but sometimes it takes between three and four milligrams of morphine to get him comfortable. Sometimes it may take 20 or 30 milligrams of morphine. Okay. It really depends on the individual patient. Okay. The aim of IV loading is to get the patient comfortable quickly. However, you don't necessarily need for the patient to be completely pain free. Loading should stop if the patient is drowsy, bradycardic or hypotensive. And to prevent potentially dangerous respiratory depression, IV loading should stop if the respiratory rate is less than eight breaths per minute. Of course, you should also stop if the patient has any unbearable side effects or an allergic reaction. Hello, Jeremy, how are you feeling now? Much better. I can cope with this level of pain. Excellent. Um, so now that Jeremy's more comfortable, I think that we should use a multimodal strategy for his analgesia, mm -hmm. um, probably following the WHO pain ladder. That sounds like a great idea. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to use in, in Jeremy's case? I suppose we could use a morphine patient-controlled analgesia pump. Exactly. So, are you? Do you feel confident in prescribing that? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Perfect. Well, you've got my bleep number if you have any problems. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. Take care. A pain score of above seven out of ten on a numerical rating scale should be treated as a medical emergency, and strong intravenous opioids are necessary to quickly get the patient comfortable. The intravenous route is preferable as it can quickly and reliably achieve an effective plasma concentration of analgesia. One to three milligrams intravenous morphine should be administered every five minutes, checking pain scores and vital signs after every five minutes. No further boluses are required when the patient is comfortable or if the patient becomes drowsy or with a respiratory rate of less than eight. A multimodal approach to continuing analgesia should be considered. This may include a PCA.